Tyrannosaurus rex is one of the best known dinosaurs to have ever walked the earth. It is known to have been a ferocious predator, one which has been portrayed in many films and books. It stood 12 feet tall, 40 feet long, and weighed over 15,000 pounds, or six and a half tons. But if Jurassic Park was to become a reality, and T-Rex DNA could help to recreate this awesome prehistoric giant, could it survive today? Of course, having a giant predatory carnivore roaming the planet would have severe consequences for mankind, other animals, and the ecosystem in which we live. But it's an interesting question. Could T-Rex survive today? To answer this question, we need to consider the dinosaur's habitat diet, and climate in which it once thrived. Are any of these available today? T. rex lived during the late Cretaceous period, 100 million years ago to 66 million years ago. T. rex was alive during the dinosaur's massive extinction event. Many other species of dinosaurs had died out before the mass extinction, caused by the devastation that followed a meteor strike on Earth. The world was a very different place back then. The continents we are familiar with today were making their way to their current location. Australia was still attached to Antarctica, and America was moving westwards, opening up the Atlantic Ocean. The climate was much warmer than it is today, but had cooled since the early Cretaceous. There were no polar ice sheets. Instead, Antarctica was covered in forests, where T. rex and other dinosaurs could have roamed. Flowering plants were thriving, as were deciduous trees. T. rex was largely dominant in the north. Their fossils have mostly been found in North America, whilst another meat-eating predator, the Spinosaurus, was more common in the south. Early birds and mammals were finding their place amongst the giants during this time too. The warmth that was evident during the Cretaceous period was due to large amounts of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. This greenhouse gas traps sunlight as heat, raising the temperature of the planet. The carbon dioxide came from the high volcanic activity at the time. Volcanic eruptions released large amounts of carbon dioxide. The decay of dead plants and erosion of carbonaceous rock also contributed to the large volumes of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. During the Cretaceous, places like Alaska were a warm 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 27 degrees Celsius. In Siberia, where today temperatures can drop as low as minus 80 degrees Fahrenheit, or minus 60 degrees Celsius. It was much warmer. It ranged from 70 degrees Fahrenheit, or 21 degrees Celsius during the summer months, to about 43 degrees Fahrenheit, or 6 degrees Celsius in the winter. It is thought that T. rex preferred temperatures of 91 degrees Fahrenheit, or 33 degrees Celsius. Today, there are plenty of places that fall within the temperature ranges that T. rex would have thrived in. Rainfall during the late Cretaceous was abundant in places like Alaska, where it was also warm. This is evidenced by wide tree rings and fossilized trees. It seems that the climate was drier towards the equator. The opposite is true today, where some of the wetter, hotter places are found nearer the equator. This implies that there are climatic conditions available on Earth today that would support T. rex, but their geographical distribution may be different from the Cretaceous period. As well as the T. rex's climate, we need to consider its habitat. Fossil evidence suggests that T. rex was a versatile predator that was well adapted to living in a variety of habitats, from coastal plains and floodplains to forests and open grasslands. T. rex fossils have been found in a range of different rock formations, including those associated with river and lake environments. This suggests that they may have hunted near water sources. T. rex likely inhabited areas with abundant food sources, such as large herbivorous dinosaurs like Triceratops and Edmontosaurus. They may have also preferred areas with cover and shelter, such as forests, which would have provided hiding places for ambush-style hunting. Today, there may be far fewer wild areas available to T. rex than there were over 65 million years ago, but the habitats that they lived in are still present on our planet just covering a much smaller area. Finally, let's look at T. rex's diet. We know that T. rex was a carnivorous dinosaur. It is depicted in movies and books as a ferocious predator that killed everything in its path. But this wasn't necessarily true, and there is debate about where this meat came from. Some argue whether T. rex was more of a scavenger or a hunter. 
This huge dinosaur likely did both, and even some evidence of cannibalism. Some scientists say that based on current day predator-prey relationships in places like the Serengeti, when applied to T-Rexes, they are portrayed as predators like lions. But other researchers have argued that they likely spent a lot of their time scavenging like today's hyenas. This was concluded from the number of T-Rex fossils compared to its prey's fossils. They were of roughly equal number. If T-Rex had been solely a predator, then you would expect there to be three or four times as many prey species within the same area. Either way, T-Rex was a formidable meat-eater and had an impressive bite force. From reconstructive models and predicting the mass of their jaw muscles, scientists believe that T-Rex had a bite force of 57,000 newtons. This is compared to just 300 newtons for the average human being, or 16,500 for crocodiles, which have the strongest bite force in the animal kingdom today. T-Rex's 60 serrated teeth measure up to 8 inches, or 20 centimeters long, and its sheer size meant that it could take down most other dinosaurs. It needed to consume a lot of food to sustain its massive body. However, it is difficult to determine exactly how much T-Rex ate in a single feeding, or even over its lifetime. Based on comparisons with modern-day predators, scientists estimate that a fully grown T-Rex may have needed to consume around 300 pounds or 140 kilograms of food per day to maintain its body weight. However, this is just an estimate, and T-Rex's feeding habits may have varied depending on factors such as the availability of prey and the season. Coprolites, or fossilized scat from T-Rexes, have been examined to determine not only what the dinosaurs ate, but what their digestion was like. In the case of T-Rexes, analysis of their feces, which measured a foot and a half long, has revealed that they had a relatively quick digestion time and fast metabolism. This would have meant that they needed to eat regularly in order to survive. In comparison, today's largest reptile, the saltwater crocodile, needs to eat about 50 full meals a year. Prey species included grazing dinosaurs like Triceratops and Edmontosaurus, Today, some animals would be comparable in size. The African bush elephant would give Triceratops a run for its money regarding its size and weight, whilst Triceratops weighed 5 to 6 tons and stood between 7 to 10 feet tall. The African elephant can weigh 4 to 6 tons and stand 10 to 13 feet tall. Edmontosaurus, though, would have dwarfed any African elephant. To survive, T. rex would have to hunt a lot. With populations of today's large mammals, such as elephants and rhinos, often under threat from habitat loss, human interference, and poaching, the few that remain would be decimated by T. rexes. Although the climate and habitat in some parts of the world appear favorable for the prehistoric giants, making sure there were enough prey species for them to hunt or scavenge would prove difficult. Their voracious appetite would wreak havoc on today's prey animals. There could also be other factors to consider when talking about diet, as mammals weren't on the menu for T. rexes during the late Cretaceous period. Would their digestive systems adapt to consuming warm-blooded, furry prey? Today, many reptiles consume mammals and birds as well as fish, invertebrates, and other reptiles, so it probably wouldn't be an issue. But it is worth noting how different the ecology is today compared to 65 million years ago. The whole ecosystem and food chain have changed dramatically since dinosaurs ruled the Earth. If it were to be reincarnated, perhaps T. rexes would be more suited to a zoo or park where their numbers could be limited and food sources maintained for their survival. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time. time.